2,400 years ago, a ship left the port of the Greek Aegean island of Chios, carrying on board cargo destined for other ports in the Mediterranean region. Everything was planned to go smoothly, but soon after setting sail, disaster struck, sending the ship and its cargo to the bottom of the sea. Thanks to underwater archaeology and archaeological science, the ship's cargo hasn't been lost forever. 2,400 years later, we're beginning to find out what some of the commodities being carried on that ship were. I'm Madam Archaeologist, your go-to informant on everything archaeology, and in this episode, I'll dive into a different way that ancient DNA is being used. Usually, we hear stories of DNA coming from humans, talking about migrations, or how one genetic population contributed to the genetics of another, but we can also, when preservation conditions allow, get ancient DNA from pots and find out what the pot may have once contained. The shipwreck I am discussing today sank off the coast of Chios, a Greek island in the Aegean. It is known as the Chios Inuses wreck, and more than 350 amphorae from this wreck survive. Amphorae are a type of two-handled container used in ancient times for the transport and storage of commodities. They appear to have been invented by the Canaanites, although their use became widespread throughout the Mediterranean and was especially popular with the ancient Greeks and Romans. Typically, these jars carried wine, olive oil, spices, or fish sauce. Traditionally, the likely commodity was assigned based on the amphora type, but unless we have explicit remains, like olive pits, it's impossible to know just by looking at a pot what it specifically contained. Luckily though, Residues often survive. Sometimes we can see them, and sometimes they've been absorbed into the pot's ceramic matrix. And thanks to advances in archaeological science, using these, we can find out what a pot once contained. Two amphorae from the shipwreck had their DNA extracted. The first amphora, assigned to the cayenne type, revealed genetic evidence for olives and oregano. This suggests that the likely product carried within it was olive oil. The second amphora, which couldn't be assigned to a type, contained a product within the Pistachia genus, originally identified as either mastic, a resin commonly used in wine production, or pistachio nut. Later analysis revealed that the specific species was actually Pistachia terebinthus, aka terebinth. Even though grape DNA couldn't be extracted, the presence of terebinth DNA still suggests that wine was once carried within this jar. Since we know that the ancient Greeks often coated their amphorae with terebinth resin before pouring wine inside. It is very interesting that the amphora containing fragments of olive and oregano DNA was assigned to the cayenne type, cayenne meaning from Chios, because cayenne amphorae were originally assumed to have contained wine. 5th and 4th century BC coins from the island depict amphorae with grapes directly above. The high quality of cayenne wine is also mentioned in ancient sources. Now, we know that wine wasn't the island's only export. It has been suggested that oregano was added to the olive oil either as a preservative or to enhance the flavor, or maybe both. This is very interesting because it speaks of the sophisticated knowledge that the ancient Greeks had about food preservation. Oregano has antimicrobial properties, meaning that it helps prevent spoilage. Likewise, terebinth also has antimicrobial properties. This is something you need to think about when you're transporting your products for trade. You don't want your goods to go bad. Adding preservatives to food is by no means a modern thing, and the ancient Greeks knew how to do it in a way that maintained the healthiness of their food products. And amphorae from the Chios Inusis shipwreck aren't the only ones that have been subjected to DNA analysis. DNA has also been extracted from amphorae house at the Hellenic Ministry of Culture and Tourism Ephorate of Underwater Antiquities in Athens. We don't know exactly what context they come from, aside from the fact that they were deposited in the sea because they were brought up from the seafloor in fishing nets. They do not come from official excavations. But this study was still extremely valuable because it showed that the contents of these ancient Greek amphorae were much more diverse than originally thought. The pots under investigation here have been dated mainly to the 3rd century BC, with one to the 4th and two to the 5th. But all of them, originally, were assumed to have contained wine. Well, DNA has proven this assumption wrong. Out of nine jars tested, grape DNA was found in five of them, but olive DNA was found in six. Of these, four jars had both olive and grape DNA, suggesting that they likely carried, at different times, olive oil and wine. Moreover, the majority of the jars, in fact, all excluding one, 
had DNA belonging to the genus Juniperus. DNA from the citrus, legume, walnut, and ginger families were also found in some of the jars. The researchers couldn't get the exact species within the legume, walnut, and ginger families, but this makes it possible that legumes, ginger, and walnuts, or walnut oil, were being transported across the Mediterranean in antiquity. Pistachio DNA was found in six jars, representing probably either mastic or terebinth resin, and five contained evidence of herbs such as oregano, mint, and or thyme. We don't know if these amphorae were multi-use, containing different commodities at different times, or if the commodities being transported within them were a mixture of different ingredients. I quote the paper outlining the results of the study. One possibility is that in their first use, these jars carried the single species commodity olive oil or dual species resonated wine, grape and pistachia such as Amphora 8, or grape and some other resin producing species such as those in the Pinus genus. But later the amphoras were reused for shipping different goods. The second possibility is that the jars were one-time use carriers for olive oil or wine, but that these jars were more complex than previously imagined. If these jars contained oil, it was not a single species commodity, but was mixed with other species. Herbal additives would have improved flavor and promoted preservation. Likewise, if the five jars containing grape DNA were used one time only to carry wine, then it appears that it was flavored and preserved with herbal additives prior to shipping. Amphora 8 is an exception, containing only grape and pistachia and no other species. Spices such as mint, thyme, oregano, rosemary, sage, and juniper have strong antioxidant, antibacterial, and antifungal properties, and would have protected amphora contents from spoilage during transit and storage." End quote. I'm in favor of both interpretations. Some jars were likely multi-use, and others probably contained commodities with multiple ingredients. The researchers also consider a third possibility, that ancient Greek amphorae transported a wider variety of goods. The grape DNA, for example, could have been wine, or it also could have been whole grapes or even vinegar. Still, it's clear that these amphorae were much more than just wine containers. I'll also note that DNA isn't the only method for identifying food remains within ancient pots. There are other methods, like GCMS. If you'd like to learn more about this, check out my episode, Pottery Revealing the Past. That's it for this episode. Ancient DNA is truly a game changer in archaeology. I would love to see more studies utilizing DNA to identify the contents of pots performed. It is clear that it's very valuable for identifying potential commodities, if not at the species level, then at least at the genus or family level. Don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe for more cool content by your go-to informant on everything archaeology, Madam Archaeologist.